Hi, Debbie Morton here, and I just want to take a hot minute to let you know that the video you were about to watch wasn't filmed specifically here for YouTube. It was actually over on my Facebook page, and I brought that content over here to YouTube. So disregard any references to anything Facebook. I'm happy to have you along. If you like my content, you can like, you can leave a comment in the comment section, subscribe, and hit that bell if you'd like to be notified anytime I go live in the future. Have an absolutely wonderful day, and thanks for watching. Good morning, everyone. I am actually maybe afternoon or evening for some of you. I'm coming to you from a beautiful Cabo Azul Resort in San Jose del Cabo. And I wanted to hop on here. It's been a long time since I've done a live. Facebook doesn't favor them anymore since Reels came out. The only people, um, the only things that people are shown mainly are the short video Reels. And so if you happen to be watching this on a replay, go ahead and just hit replay. It just kind of helps so that other people who might want to see this can, can tune in and Facebook will show it to them. But I wanted to just hop on and first of all, say thank you so much to an amazing community here on Facebook that has been just an incredible support over the last few years. And I'm gonna to try to get through this without crying, um, but I have a few things that I wanna share. And um, the, the Facebook community here has just been incredible in reaching out to me personally. I've had the pleasure of being able to meet with a couple of people in person who said that they were in the area and they'd been through uh, something similar to what I had been through. And so um, for those of you who are just tuning in, if you don't know me, my name is Debbie Morton. And about three months ago on June 7th, I lost my husband very unexpectedly. And I have had a few people ask questions, you know, what happened? And I do want to answer that because I didn't go into a whole lot of detail um, on, on the page. But John had had, a, had, had an heart attack. <laughs> That's hard to say. John had a heart attack about seven years ago. And it really scared him. Like it woke, it woke him up in terms of his diet and staying active and fit. And he was very fit, very active. He was a competition water skier. And he loved to hike. And so um, when we moved to Phoenix, we, he found a new cardiologist and he went over, you know, his diet and everything with a cardiologist. And, and in April of this year, we were going to come, we did, we came to this very resort. We were going to go scuba diving. And in order to go scuba diving, because John had a heart attack previously, he had to have a letter giving him authorization to scuba dive. So he actually went to the doctor in March and he had all kinds of blood work. He had an EKG, a stress test, and he was super excited because the doctor said to him, his cardiologist said, you're like the healthiest patient I have. Just keep doing what you're doing. So he did. And on June 7th, actually that was a Tuesday. On Sunday, before that Tuesday, I went up to Sedona. It's about 90 minutes from our house. And I wanted to go up to Sedona. I invited John to go up there with me and we would do some hiking up there, but he wanted to go on a particular hike that was happening down in the Phoenix Valley. What I also learned later is that he had bought a kayak that I was unaware of. And so I'm sure he was planning on picking up the kayak as well. And that was gonna be a surprise. And so, and it was a surprise. So anyways, um, so I was up in the morning. I was actually kind of going through a class, a live trading session and, and just learning some stuff. And I got a phone call from the hike organizer who happens to be a really, really good friend of John's. They hike a lot together. And he just said, John is okay. I just wanted to let you know that he collapsed on the hike and they're taking him to the hospital right now, but he was joking around. And it was, was while he was in the ambulance that his heart stopped. And so when I got a phone call, I was coming from Sedona to the hospital where he was being taken, which was about a 90 minute drive from Sedona. And the doctor called and said that, you know, he was being kept alive with an automatic um, like an automatic, I don't even know what's a CPR machine, something that was pounding his chest and, and oxygen, but they, he was being taken into surgery and they were going to do their best to get his heart going again. And so, um, and so by the time I got down, he was still in surgery when I got to the hospital, but he didn't make it. And so, um, that was a day that really changed my life. And, um, it's okay, I'm doing well. I don't wanna cry right now just because uh, nobody prepares for that. And, and one thing, there's gonna be several lessons as you listen to this, just several lessons. You never know what your last day is. John was fit, he was healthy. He went out that day. Now he did take his blood pressure in the morning. I saw the blood pressure machine sitting on the bed. 
So maybe he had some inkling that something wasn't right, but he had had an assurance from his doctor a few months previous that everything was fine. And so I think he might have only taken that blood pressure just, you know, to, I don't know why. <laughs> I'll never be able to know that why. why but, but the one thing I want to share is if you're in a relationship, and you are in relationships, right? You have your parents, you have your kids, you have a spouse, you have a loved one, you have brothers, sisters. If you're in a relationship, like you never know. Always make sure that relationship is right. And always make sure that if something were to happen that person, do you know what to do? And in this situation, it's kind of weird. There were a lot of premonitions and I wanna share that with you also. It's probably what has made this journey maybe a little bit simpler for me, certainly not easy, but, but simpler for me. Um, about six months ago, I just started having like, I wouldn't even call them premonitions, but at the time, I guess they were, you know, a lot of times when I would think, you know, John, if something were to happen to you, I need to know how to get a hold of your clients. John, if something were to happen to you, I need to know how to unlock the back gate. John, if something were to happen to you. And there was just a lot of that. And I don't know if maybe there was some unspoken signs or something that I was being sensitive to, but it was because of that, that on May 31st, he sent me a document that had like all of his end of life wishes, his favorite songs, and the key to getting into his computer, the password to his passwords file, which is what really helped me be able to wrap everything up. We got married 10 years ago, so he had personal accounts and then he had a business and business accounts and then he took care of my business because he was a bookkeeper. So he had my business accounts in his name, which became a little bit of a challenge. And then we had our joint accounts and so he was maintaining a lot of different accounts and there were credit cards assigned to each one. And when you're in a time of grief and it's very unexpected, I can't tell you how grateful I am that I had that and that he had left that for me. So. So one thing, lesson number one, uh, you know, just make sure that your loved ones know what to do if something happens to you. So that kind of brings me to like my future. And um, well, let me, let me kind of go through the, the timeline. The first month was just really difficult. I had a lot of work to do, a lot. Getting everything straightened out, making sure the bills still got paid, trying to figure out which bills came from which accounts. Accounts were being closed down by the banks. He had me as POD on some of the accounts, so they transferred, but they wouldn't let me withdraw a portion of the account. I had to withdraw the whole thing, but it might've been the only account that had his name on it, so I couldn't close that account. There were some accounts he thought he had me as POD, but I was actually just a co-signer, and those accounts actually got closed. And so there was just, there was a lot of, of just like tracking down everything, figuring out what, oh, I'm getting eaten by mosquitoes here. Um, just tracking down everything that, that was out there and making sure that bills got paid. Um, and then you're trying to do that in a time of grief. You're just in a complete state of fog, expecting that he's gonna walk out of his room at any moment, or you know, you're gonna turn around and you're gonna see him at any moment. And, and it's just, it's a, it was a lot to deal with that first month. I think I just went through it in a total state of shock. After that, we had several trips that we had planned together. We had three different trips that were already booked. We are timeshare owners. I am not advocating timeshare, but I will tell you that in my situation, I am very grateful for them right now. Um, the, um, he had three trips planned. One of them was to St. Martin and we were going with a friend. So I decided to take that trip anyways. I could sit home and, and grieve not only John, but also the fact that we weren't on this trip that he had planned. So I decided to go anyways. And there was a friend of ours that, that went with us and, or that was going with us that now went with me. So I went ahead and did that trip. And I'm really glad I did, even though he wasn't there. You know, I just, I got to experience St. Martin. And if I'm gonna grieve, I'd rather grieve on a beautiful beach than in a home that is missing him. And so I went ahead and went on that trip and it wasn't easy, but, but I did it. And I'm so glad that I did. Like sometimes you just have to feel the fear, feel the uncomfortableness of something and just do it anyways. Then we had a trip to West Virginia planned with a couple's friend of ours. And again, I went on that trip with them and that was to Williamsburg, Virginia. And then from there, um, my friend Debbie and I, we went up to Tennessee and Pigeon Forge. So I got to explore three new areas you know, in that trip. And then the final trip that John and I had planned together was to this resort. And that's why what I mentioned in my post yesterday, this was really difficult. I had a bad day on Friday. I just woke up because 
we come here all the time. This is kind of like my home away from home. It's only a two hour flight from home. It's very inexpensive. And we'll, we'll come down here and maybe two or three times a month, not month, two or three times a year. Oh, I'm just getting eaten a lot by these mosquito, mosquitoes um, or little gnats or something. But anyways, um, we would come down here about three or four times a year and, and just hang out. It's very safe, it's very beautiful, it's on the beach. The grocery store is a one mile walk in one direction and the village of San Jose del Cabo is a mile walk in the other direction. And so I invited a friend of mine that I've known forever. She's, she's been just a dear friend for probably 30 years. And so I invited her to go with me. And this trip was a little tough because I have a lot of memories here. Just, we've done so much in this area. We've hung out by the pools. I can name every chair that we've sat in, every dish we've eaten at a restaurant. It's just been, um, this, is, this place was very, very special to us. So I wasn't sure how I would how I would do with this trip. And I will say that I am here now and I am, I'm gonna kind of walk a little bit so I'm not so exposed to the mosquitoes. Um, it's been a really, really awesome trip. This is, by the way, a chapel that if somebody's getting married, it's just an incredible place to, to get married. So anyways, um, so I, I came here and Saturday was really tough. Just a lot of thoughts about what, it, what, was, it, what was it going to feel like, um, just, you know, thinking about him, missing him, uh, all the memories. But I knew, I knew that I had to face it because this is a place I do want to come back to and to just, you know, cherish the memories that we made here and be able to create some new ones so that I can come back by myself, which kind of leads me into where am I going in the future? And I don't have brothers and sisters, nieces, nephews. I don't have any living blood relatives. My parents are gone. And this is the first time in my life that I don't have a job, a brick and mortar business that I need to be like close to. I don't have immediate family or close family that I need to, to remain near. I don't have a dog, I don't have a house. I, don't have, I have a house, but I don't have a mortgage. We moved to Phoenix and we thought we'd just like hang out here for a little while and, and figure out what we wanted to do, where we wanted to buy. And then the housing market went crazy. So we thought, well, we'll just wait for it to settle down. And so, uh, this year, I'm going to be selling everything that I have. I'm really attached to nothing. I have a few sentimental things, obviously photos and a couple of sentimental things that have been given to me over the years and I've collected over the years. I'm going to get a environmentally controlled storage and I'm going to put my stuff into that storage and I'm going to hit the road because of that little virus, which I won't say on Facebook because I'm sure they listen to the videos, <laughs> but that little virus that goes going around and it wasn't little, I, I don't want to minimize it, but, but because the world was shut down for two years, uh, because of that, I do have a lot of timeshare points that are now saved. And if you do it right, if you know how to work your timeshare, and if you have a timeshare, figure out how to work it. Like you can, you can make a timeshare stretch really, really far. So I did some math and I did some calculations and I can literally live out of timeshares for about a year and a half. And it's already pretty much paid for. I'll have to do maintenance fees for next year, but um, pretty much it's, it's already paid for. So I'm really looking forward to traveling the country, just seeing What's, what's here in America and going coast to coast. I'll be doing this in my car. I'm not gonna rent a van because for the most part, I'm gonna hunker down and stay in a place like this for two or three weeks or a month. And then maybe hop on a plane and go to St. Martin and stay in St. Martin for a month. And then get back on, on a plane, come back to the States and maybe stay in Florida for a few weeks or Sedona in a few weeks. And I really have the ability to just go anywhere. And, and what happens with, with my particular timeshare is they have specials if you book within the next 30 days to maybe 90 days, it's like a fraction of the points. It's like 75% off. And so I'm really looking forward to it. I'm just looking forward to home is where I am. Home is wherever I am laying my head on the pillow. It's not, it doesn't have to be a house that I'm paying a mortgage on. It doesn't have to be a house that I'm, that I'm renting it. It's wherever I am is my home. And I'm really looking forward to, in fact, let me um, come over here and, and show you show you a little bit. I'm really looking forward to having this. Hold on one second. I don't want to trip and fall. That doesn't make for good video. <laughs> so I really, I'm looking forward to coming to a place like this. Here's a adult serenity pool where you can just hang out in the evenings. There's a, um, a hot tub way in the back there. So I'm just I'm looking forward 
to be able to come here and this will be home for a few weeks. I, I work from anywhere. I work from my computer and I work from my phone and so wherever I am is where home is going to be. And so I just wanted to pop on here and let you know I am. I'm good. I, this is a process and nobody can tell you how fast or slow the grief process is going to go. I am not going to grief counseling. I really want to move through this process as quickly as possible and I feel like what's helped me do that is all of the personal development work that I've done over the years. I've been to a lot of different things like Tony Robbins and Landmark and a lot of different personal development um, where I've learned that everything is about a choice. We cannot control the circumstances in our life. This is another lesson for everyone. You can't control the circumstances in your life. If you go through a divorce, if a spouse leaves you unexpectedly uh, because they pass away or they just decide they don't want to be with you anymore, or if you lose a loved one, or if you get an illness, we can't control things that happen in our lives, but what we can control is our attitude. And in everything, it's like, what can you be grateful for? And there are so many things, I miss John terribly, I would give anything to have him back, but that's not a possibility. And I get to choose, do I wanna remain miserable, you know, living alone without him for the next 10 years, or do I choose to accept that he's not here, but I have the memories and I have all the wonderful things that, that are set up and in place, that I can now live a life that I choose to live and still enjoy life. And I have all the memories in my phone of him and I'm so grateful that we traveled as much as we did. That's another thing, stop waiting for someday. If there's things you wanna do, if there's a, a dream trip that you wanna take, you wanna go somewhere and create memories with your loved one or your family or your kids or your grandkids, do it. You just don't know what tomorrow holds. And I remember a long time ago I was watching, I don't know if you guys have seen the show Susie or Mormon. But right after I got divorced, I was having, having a little pity party on the couch and I used to watch that show and she would, she would listen to people tell about their finances and how much they make and how much is in the bank and what's in their retirement and then they wanted to buy something like they wanted to buy a car or they wanted to buy, you know, something. And, and I remember watching that show and at the time, right after I filed for divorce, I booked a trek up to the top of Kilimanjaro to go to Africa and climb Kilimanjaro. And my plan was to be on the top of that mountain when my divorce was final because I didn't want to like be sulking or anything. I wanted to be doing something that I wanted to be doing and that would keep my mind occupied during the process. And I remember watching the show and thinking, oh my gosh, if I told her what I was making and how much I had saved and that I wanted to go spend, you know, 10 or $12,000 on a trip to Kilimanjaro, I would have so been denied, <laughs> like, like totally been denied. But I will say, I am so grateful that I did it. Even then, now you have to be responsible, but I'm so grateful that I did it. I'm so grateful that I, I took the opportunity and I took the chance and I did it and I have memories that will last me a lifetime because of it. And in my opinion, you can't take the material things with you. You can't take, you can't take your money with you. You can't take your belongings with you. And, and when you're laying in bed, don't ever lay on your deathbed thinking, I wish I would have done this, or I wish I could have done that. You only have one life and you don't know when it's gonna end. And so for me, I'm gonna live life to the fullest. I'm gonna go where I wanna go when I wanna go and be with who I wanna be with. And, and just enjoy friendships and vacations. And, and for me, it's gonna be, and, and here's another thing. I know a lot of people, I know this is really long and I'm gonna wrap it up here really quickly because I didn't mean to talk, but you know me. <laughs> um, another thing that everybody's like, you're so brave, you're so brave, you're so strong. And, and I will say that my strength comes from just conditioning in how I think. Thinking about what I think about Yes, I have times where you're overcome by grief. It's inevitable. You're going to have those moments where you just sit and cry and cry and cry. Um, but I don't want to live my life in pain. And that's my choice. My choice is that I'm still going to go forward. I can feel the pain, but I don't have to suffer from it. And so that's why I'm kind of creating this. And it's not that I'm brave. I mean, you just saw this resort that I'm staying. It's not, it's not like I'm, I'm heading off in a van or my car and I'm totally homeless with no place to sleep. Like I have lots of places to sleep and all I'm doing is just stringing one three week vacation at the end of each three week vacation. I just simply travel between my vacation spots, but my vacation spots now will happen to be my home as well. And I'll do this for maybe a year 
maybe a year and a half and who knows if I hate it then I'll buy a house and settle down and just use my timeshare um, just in, in a normal way of vacation and if I love it then you know what maybe I'll take over somebody else's timeshare and continue this lifestyle I have no idea and it doesn't matter you know it does it it doesn't matter I know that I'm gonna be okay I know that I'll always have a roof over my head and um, and I can settle down and buy a house and, and live wherever I want to live when I'm ready to do that. But in the meantime, I really want to see the world. I've always wanted to travel. I've always wanted to go a lot of places. And I have these points. I, I have the gift of being able to do that. And I'm taking it. And so I just wanted to hop in and just kind of give an update for everybody. And live your life. You know, decide your dreams and figure out what it's going to take to get there. And just take the action to get there. And you've got this, you know, no matter what's going on, we can't control, can't control the, the events of our life, but you can control your attitude around them. And that is the most important thing. And this has really been, it's tested, tested my ability to do that. And I think I'm doing okay at it. And so I just wanted to hop on here and say, I love you all. Thank you so much for supporting me. And I'm going to go now because I'm going to cry. <laughs> Bye-bye.